Hey, real fit, if you have that book, get it and get it done. If you have an outline, they need to reach out to you. In the imagery, if you simply, you all know what you're doing, you know how to position well, and what's going on this holistic approach to what y'all are doing and involving authors, bringing that thought. I'm looking forward to hearing more of the different people you have on here. And just the, the team that you do to do the covers and what you're doing, it's legitimate. If you're on the fence, take it. They would be happy to do it. It is about what comes after that. It, like we said, that intangible wealth is priceless. It really is. And going forward in these digital days, I implore anyone, if you're in business, do it. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Leaders Talk. I am excited to be here with you again. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Dupie, and today we have with us uh, Paul Gunn. Paul Gunn is the Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling author of Game On, uh, the anthology in which we have featured leaders who last and succeed the right way, Paul's very own book. Paul, welcome. Hey, Andrew, thanks for having me. We're really excited to have you. Uh, yeah, I, I think I was originally your very first point of contact when you came to us. So this is the first time we've talked in, man, almost a year and a half, two years. Yeah, it, it has. Yeah, lots changed and then the weathered the <laughs> pandemic, eh? Oh yeah, that that is true. We actually uh, we actually met before the pandemic, so that's a it's been a long journey that we've had, and we look forward to further further adventures on that journey. Um, so without the audience knowing a little bit about our past, why don't you fill everybody in? Who, who are you and, and and how'd you get here? So who I am, I, I like to call myself basically a vessel for outpouring into others via empathy, kindness, and compassion. That's at the core of me. By nature of where that outpouring comes, we are an instrumental arm and help providers get home safely as I like. To, to say we supply a lot of the materials that either go on them or in the tanks, in the aircraft, whatever it helps that we can do to get them home is the mm -hmm. crush and the passion of, of what I do into outpouring there. And those things help kind of bring in resources to further other important kind of charities that are, are close and dear to my heart. So as a collective holistic approach, that's the inpouring of those to continue on helping others succeed mm -hmm. in a combination of game on and succeed the right way. Hey, you got to last to be able to succeed in whatever the domain you are, or ultimately look, looking to make an impact in people's lives, whatever that domain is. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about uh, your journey in creating Succeed the Right Way. A lot of people that are listening to us right now, I would think that they're also early in your journey, the way that you were about a year and a half, two years ago, um, and, and are kind of just starting to explore things. So, you know, what, what made you decide that writing was going to be something that you as a business person were going to begin to explore? It was interesting how we ran into each other. You know, Anika, we were in Forbes Council, we were writing and going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I think I touched something on empathy and then she initially connected. Then we started writing back and forth, but it wasn't. A, I wrote that article on entrepreneur that basically empathy wins and selling doesn't. Did it gain traction? I got a lot of back channel, like on LinkedIn and some of the different platforms. Hey, there's some real meat to this. But the mm -hmm. big crux of what caused me to write that, that was my first experience, and as pretty much a lot of other people, of something just that was unknown. Just had a young son, but you <laughs> would remember mm -hmm. how we had to break to interact with each other. And I didn't know what was going to happen. So the real reason <clears throat> something came over me, start writing this stuff down, <clears throat> almost as a memoir, to let them know, look, if something happens to dad, whatever goes on in this life, take these principles and use them because your intangible wealth for success isn't necessarily in material things. It's how you impact people. And in doing that, you may in turn have the tangible wealth you seek. And as we began to write and go through it back and forth, that article just pushed it further to submit. Hey, I think I have something here. Let me apply this application and tell my story and what was seen going on between all the shutdowns, people losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. It just really stuck. Let me write this. Maybe it's going to help inspire somebody 
And it, it, that was the big crush. I didn't know if I was going to be alive. So I wanted to leave it for him. Yeah, amazing. Um, and yeah. that, that, that's such an important thing, you know, this is what you can have as a book that uh, is, it, it's everlasting. <laughs> Once yes. it's out there, you know, you put something down that, you know, anybody can read, uh, your, your son, future generations, however that works. Um, I like this concept of empathy, though. Uh, we, we were talking about that. And, and you know, the, we, we as a, I think our North Star as Leaders Press is to look at ways in which people can help as mentors. So tell me a little bit about where you feel that empathy serves you in your business. So it, I've always felt this way in life and in business that they always say, look, hey, relationships are what happen in business and to foster that relationship, to foster that, you have to be able to use, sense, pick up on the cues and really sense what people are looking for. You know, approaching them for what you want is just not going to get it there. In most cases, yeah, you don't have to be laced with empathy to sense that somebody's thinking about themselves in most cases. So if you go in with an open ear and trying to find out how you can help them, you're positioning a collective agreement and collaboration. And what really struck me, reading some of the people that were successful, reading some of the other books, like in How to Win Friends and Influence People, you really understand the successful people, not just because they were looking for tangible wealth, but because seeking to make an impact, rooted themselves in something bigger than just that and seeking to anchor in that relationship. So in ours, it plays an important role because what I'm trying to do is position to help our end users and mm -hmm. the customers with the government, but ultimately someone who I don't know, who I may not see, be at least protected in the best way they can when they're overseas or here defending our, our freedom. And that takes something big in me to, to be able to approach somebody else and form a collaborative relationship. Yeah, I mean, that that's just it. Some people in business see empathy almost as a weakness. Um, and yet, it, I, I agree with you, I see it as a strength, because, you know, when you're talking about uh, get, becoming more visible, when you're talking about building authority, isn't that all about relationships? Yes. And, and two things, two books really left a mark on me. One, I would say, How to Win Friends and Influence People. But I think one of the ones recently in there, uh, a lot of people probably read it, Extreme Ownership. And now what I took out of that was mm -hmm. the Navy SEAL training and the, the perception that people have maybe about them. Yes, they're extreme fighters, tough. But what I took out of that book was how they had some of the examples where here are two experienced well-trained warriors coming in operations and basically speaking hard truths, but they were listening, they were hearing, and that's what I took. Other people may take something out of it, but what I saw was two strong personalities and people who went in to want to make an impact, told difficult things in a way that had to be heard and understood the people they were dealing with to ultimately make change. It is exactly right. It is not something weak. Now, I feel nice, it's agreeable, and in that case, you don't get anything mm -hmm. because nice may be rooted in the ego, and you're, you can be seen as being selfish that you're too scared to say something in the sense to be agreeable versus being kind enough to tell somebody, look, this just isn't going to work. How can we work together to make it a collective benefit from everybody else. Now that takes strength because you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position to one not be like, to one have something said back to you in that moment that may not be seen, but later you're looking down the road. That's not something people may do well. And if they do it, they may not be able to deliver it in a compassionate way. So some are good at telling you difficult things mm -hmm. to just don't say it in a way that wants you to be receptive and do it mm -hmm. well then 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 the role i guess of someone like you would be one of mentorship yeah yeah that you're seeking to say hey look we how do we collectively go i some people as oh well you're the ceo or something like no that's the title that was left to give me. I said, I would have taken anyone else. I'm a team player like everybody else. That just <laughs> happens to be the title. But I did have a kind of a mentor 
an unnamed mentor who had excessive wealth and he came from nothing. And what was interesting about that was how, I, I tell the story often, in his house, he would be outside when he had um, a prospective client come over. He would be gardening. And depending on how the person treated him there as if he didn't matter, he would later walk around, open the door, and they'd come and sit him down and then he'd clean up. Hey, how you doing? He's like, we can't do business together. Because if this is how you're going to treat somebody who does not matter to you, I don't want to do it. And the people who were kind and dealt with him as just a human, he worked with. So it just showed me, here's someone who has built something from nothing using these applications. And when you the collective group around him, it is quite different than what people thought. They were all laced with empathy and kindness. And it, it, it seems like it's not a secret amongst those that are really successful to use that. And it just left a mark on me to say, hey, if this guy can do it and all so many people around them, then, uh, then I'm on the right path. Yeah. And then, and then by you now becoming an author and by you being able to get your message out, now you're in a role of mentorship. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. It's like, how did you write a book? How did you get the time to do that? Well, well, it, you had help. It's, it's just interesting. And you know, what? going through, the, I asked those same questions. I mean, who it was when we first start? Like, yep. do the outline do the outline. And then some people ask me, Paul, how did you do it? That outline is critical to do it because once that outline came, so yeah, it really made sense. And, and you started seeing, okay, all those thoughts could start piecing in to where you wanted to go. So it, it definitely, I am really glad that I did it. And I, I implore anyone who's looking to do that, the one seek y'all out and help foster how to frame it, how to edit, how to get it out and do those things. Yeah. Well, that's actually an interesting point because I know that we have a lot of people who are listening who are thinking about becoming authors. Yeah. Um, describe to that, to that moment, because I know there was a moment where it had to become real for you, where it went from being just this idea, dream maybe that you had to where you really realized this is going to happen. This book is going to be out. People are going to be reading this. What did that feel like? So first the idea, and then yeah. when, when, the, when the outline of the titles came, I said, okay, wait a minute. But when y'all did the imagery, I implore everybody, if you have the book written, don't want to use it, they need to at least contact you for the imagery because the imagery y'all have on book covers is just spot on. And when the team said, hey, just make it, tell us what you want. I was like, hey, y'all are the design team. You know how to do it. That's past my stuff. And when he came back, when y'all came back with that design, then I was like, this is real. They're really going to do this. And the book cover just sat with me <laughs> and, and, I, and they nailed it. So I implore everyone who I at least talk to, hey, look, if you have your book written, or if you just want to edit it, please contact them for the cover. Because going through this process, now seeing how I even search book, that image on the book really sticks out when you search it. And now seeing so many people putting them on Kindles, and like, hey, you, you scroll down, unless the title is catchy or you know the author, in our case, I wasn't known, maybe still not being known. You really need something to catch off the page to grab that attention. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There, there's so many things that you know it, it's that people don't think about when they're getting into publishing. Just the all the things they got to do, the getting it out there, getting it into the hands of the people they want to read it, getting the cover done, all of that material. And yeah, and I, I don't believe, obviously, in my line of work, that there's any shame in asking for help. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you think that asking for help changed your book, or do you think it made it better, made it worse? I mean, I, I'm willing for. I want the honest answer. How do you think that that affected the actual end product? I had no, I'm being frank. I had no idea about publishing. I had no idea about book writing. I think the ultimate desire, I would say not out of fear, but out of concern and that push to say, put this, but it just kept hold on me, write a book, start writing, start writing. And then to know you all were in Forbes, business council again it just made it a lot easier because she was so kind and it was welcoming and 
you pointed out, hey, look, you're already writing on Forbes. You're already writing on Entrepreneur. You have the body of work to at least make the attempt. So that basically, I was glad that y'all were there to help foster that because now what happens is you run into people and they get to see the thoughts. They can get a, a look into the mind of what I was thinking or how it was going, even though it was, it was really written for youth. And hey, if you're older or this may have passed, this new generation coming up, cementing, this is an anchoring piece for you to grow and have strength with. Use this to make an impact and change in your personal life and in your adult life as you go on in business. I was glad I did it. It's just changed so many things for me. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, yeah, uh, it, what, what has it changed? What's next for, for so Paul I, with I a book? You, what are, what you, are the new opportunities that you have? So I gave you an example for it. The, it yeah. It's not always easy in our line of work. Let me put it. There requires some effort to run into new vendors or to run into new people that may not want. But when they've gone in and be able to say, hey, oh, I see you wrote a book. And then they've told me how much they've liked it. They're a little more welcoming. So mm -hmm. for lack of a better position, it, it has helped us tremendously, both back in, both brand wise both just human wise somebody has the ability to pick that book up and know uh a little bit about me before it even happens but more so it helps in vendor relationships it's almost like hey i read your book that's the part <laughs> type of deal so it solidifies what they may feel in email and what they know about us i say that that's and that's uh what people are interested in <clears throat> when they're thinking about a book, because they always have that question. It's like, well, what's next? You know, the book is is one thing. It unlocks some things, but, you know, then then what do I make it do for me later? And that's really the question uh, that they end up having very, very often. Uh, and it sounds like you've been able to just basically turn that into something that plugs in and you turn it synergistic with all of your company and with even just being a legacy piece for you. Yeah, I will say the one piece that I did see that others do that I probably should have did and learned through the process to do write another one. I will do it. You know, and, and a branding team said that after Paul, you should have made a um a book landing page at that time to do it because now mm -hmm. I see the value in it. But see, I, there was also a part of me I'm highly introverted. I didn't necessarily want to be seen and want to be bothered for like training courses or all that at that time. It's now starting to morph into that because I really was pushing on, let me write a book for something. I didn't know. The mindset at that time was, I don't know if this is going to take me out. So let me hurry up and write this book. In hindsight, I would have had the, uh, the landing page for the book and had it all mapped out because I remember that was brought up. Hey, brother. Think about what you have planned to do. And it really wasn't at the forefront of my mind at that time, but I do employ if, if you're writing that book, start thinking of the different channels because it's a window to open up those other doors. Just without that solidified business relationships, it's solidified uh, the ability to speak well to vendors. And I, I feel is invaluable and I'm glad I've done it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just the thing. When when everyone thinks about uh, what can they do with a book, they think about how much easier it makes speaking to people. I mean, how yes. much do you feel that it's improved your communication uh, just in general? It's, it's writing it, I would say, has opened my mind to touch the inner parts of what was held in my mind and how to perfected putting it on paper one so now writing to different articles or writing back to people and share it feels like that flow has come easier so it has improved the communication style that i already felt i had but it's taking it up a notch it's positioned well i do if you're gonna do a book it's about positioning it's about getting those thoughts out i to read i find myself now finding connections on linkedin and if they have a book wanting to read the book seeing what made them work well what has it done and i feel that may start to grow in that digital age if you go down in another lockdown or if people are liking to be remote now how are you going to get to public events if everybody's remote it's easy to get to a person who has a book you read it 
I can have a warm, welcoming, hey, I read your book. I really like this. Let's go. And you start connecting. I found the connections in different book clubs for other people who've written a book. Hey, I wrote this book. I read your book. They'll look to read mine. And then there's a meshing of the two. So it's all around an excellent branding and marketing tool, but more so it's real. It's a, it's you, it's how you're speaking and those thoughts. And that's something that's authentic. There's nothing really fake essentially about the time you've taken to write a book. Someone right. reads it. They are spending tangible assets reading the book because you can <laughs> get time back. So they are vested in knowing what's going on and it's well worth it. That, that, that it also, you, you mentioned at least three times now the pandemic and that uh, I think about that as well. You know, it's so important now, like you say, to now have a lot of your business and a lot of your presence just where someone can come and find you online and someone can find you in ways that may not have been non traditional before. I mean, how, how, how do you see the world now post pandemic? Do you think your book's more important now after the pandemic than it would have been well, if it has never happened? Oh, 100 percent. Now, see, I was one of those people in public events that I didn't necessarily want to go. It wasn't forced. I'm highly introverted. I just don't like to go to them. This right. makes it a lot easier. Virtual, I could take it all day <laughs> and it makes it easier on the warm introduction. Virtually, there's a digital presence from having the Kindle, from the audio, and it just makes it that much easier. And I see it that way for I more look to go to the digital events than the in-person and when they come i'm now able to bring the books and one of the recent events i went to i was able to take the hard copy book and whether you've run into someone who's either struggling professionally or business-wise pull them to the side and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation i was able to give out the book say hey look you're going to be okay here's my story and, and it's well received in doing that it just gives you a further human touch to pass it along or you I've given it out to kids who were just telling me hey look I want to go somewhere in life I don't know what to do do you have any advice I'm like here take it you sign it yeah and they're just really happy you see an authentic spark in somebody and sometimes that's just enough to spark somebody to move forward so it's all around tangible wealth and intangible wealth or how you can impact and that's how I see it a way to spread some kindness and goodness out to people I love it when I get a book, when someone from a vendor sends it and they send me the signed book. Hey, was thinking, and they go to hand note. Everything's digital now. And I remember back when we were growing up, everything you got in the mail, handwritten or a note. So I'm still old enough to remember that. I, I really love what you're saying, Paula. I'm going to steal some of it too. I can promise you that intangible wealth is something <laughs> that I'm now going to be mentioning is one of those things that you don't think about that you get from a book. And I think that's a perfect, perfect uh, title for this episode is yeah. just how many things that you can find that, I mean, we could probably talk for hours, couldn't we? Yeah, we could. <laughs> All the things you've done. I, I do feel that because if you go read a lot, say, don't write a book, you're not going to get rich off a book, but that's not really what it's about. It, and I think you've put some of those things out there in a the scene and she's written about on there. Hey, if you're looking to pivot and make an impact, it's almost an access point to so many different things to do. It's a building block. If you're not known yet it's a way to get it and if you do it properly that much i did know hey if i was going to write a book i didn't want to try this i i hear people say oh you can write that and put it on amazon itself no i i see the distinct difference between those who do it the proper way and ask for the help for the proper way there's yes it can be done i didn't know how to do it and i wasn't willing to take the time to go try and frame it in that level that some people who have had success done it. They're, they're, I would say you have to know what you're doing to even attempt to try that. So for those that have done it, and well, I'm not knocking that I didn't know. And I knew at the gate, if you're gonna do this and do it right, because I was gonna be judged how it was done one way. It was a one shot type of one kill. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you wanted to get it right on the first time. Yeah. Um, well, Paul, the we're as we kind of wind down. Do you have any last uh, closing thoughts just for our audience before we tell them how to find you? 
Sure. I, I really feel if you have that book, get it and get it done. If you have an outline, they need to reach out to you. In the imagery, if you simply, you all know what you're doing, you know how to position well, and what's going on, bringing this holistic approach to what y'all are doing and involving authors, bringing that thought. I'm looking forward to hearing more of the different people you have on here. And just yeah. the, the team that you do to do the covers and what you're doing, it's legitimate. If you're on the fence, take it. They will be happy to do it. It is about what comes after that. It, like we said, that intangible wealth is priceless. It really is. And going forward in these digital days, I implore anyone, if you're in business, do it. Yeah. Paul, well, thank you so much for your kind words there. And, and ladies and gentlemen of the audience, that was unsolicited. We don't send our questions out beforehand. So no. I, I, that, that is that is spoken from the heart by Paul. Well, Paul, how, how can our audience find you if they want to look you up and do some business with you? It's, either, it's easiest to find me on LinkedIn. I've started. You all forced me to have to go use the other platforms. We, we'd say <laughs> you got to have more than one. So I am on LinkedIn which is the first place to find me and IG, Instagram, Twitter. And I did start going to TikTok. So I'm trying to come in into the times, but LinkedIn is the first place under Paul L. Gunn Jr. Wonderful. Perfect. And we'll, we'll go ahead and link that down below for our audience. Uh, and Paul, fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure. Um, hopefully we'll have some time in the future again, maybe to circle back around and talk a little bit more about the sympathy thing. I'd love to dig even more into that. Um, but yes, we loved having you and we wish you the absolute best. All right, well, thanks so much. <laughs>